friends, April is here and today in today's episode I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful twin Montessori floor house bed. Are you excited? Because I'm super excited. Montessori floor house bed, you could probably notice that they're a bit wobbly, you know, like kind of wonky, but um, I made sure that I fixed that problem, so stay tuned to know how to make this bed not wobbly anymore. So this is an overall dimensions of the bed and this is how it's gonna look like in the end. So as you can see, it's 78 inches tall and 42 by 75, which perfectly fits a twin mattress. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna prepare wood for our build. And uh, as I like to prepare it, I use my table saw to make square edges and to get rid of rounded edges of construction lumber because I think it looks pretty and I think it looks way more professional this way. Okay, so what I basically just did, I ripped the two by six, you know, like into two by three. So this way um, I've got the correct wood because we didn't have two by threes in the store. Seriously, every single time I'm using my table saw, I'm like, oh my god, I need to get that connector to the uh, shop vac. So, you know, like all the dust kind of goes to the shop vac. And um, you know what? I'm so lazy, I can never do that. I know. I know. I should. How much sawdust is here? Ooh. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna cut the wood. I use my miter saw to cut the wood, and you can find all the cuts you know like the cut list on my blog and uh, also I have a plan available uh, for you if you want to make this bed and uh, yeah so that's gonna make your life so much easier to know exactly where to cut and what to cut the trickiest thing for the beginners in this project probably would be the bevel cut so the poles and the roof have to be cut at 45 degree angle and it's called like a bevel cut Okay, so the next step is gonna be to sand the wood like really, really smoothly and very nicely. Everyone has to do it because to ensure that the finish is very, very smooth and uh, yeah, and like baby's butt. And since it's like a, a bed for a kid, we really want to make sure that there's gonna be no splinters, like nothing that could hurt little hands. So yeah, let's do it. I'm probably gonna be speaking for the majority of people, but sanding is a real, real bitch. <laughs> Uh, it takes so much time and it's quite time consuming but you know what it's a necessary evil for the project for any project to make sure that the wood looks prepared and uh, yeah it looks finished and professional for sanding i used uh, 80 grit paper and then i slowly moved to up to 160 and then i finished it off with a 220 grit paper two hours later oh my god <laughs> Oh my god, it's been two hours and I'm completely exhausted. Uh, it's been a lot of sending, so I need to wash myself. And um, yeah, and then we're gonna start assembling it. So I decided to uh, prime first because you know what, if you just use paint then uh, on the raw wood it's gonna soak into the wood and you'd have to add like so much more layers. So using primer is a really uh, necessary step. I mean you can probably skip it, sometimes I skip it, but I decided to go ahead and um, do it with the, uh, with the primer to make sure that I don't use too much, too much of paint later. Showtime! Yeah, so now I'm gonna uh, make the pocket holes and then I'm gonna assemble the whole bed. Let's get to it! The first step that I did, I made pocket holes on all the poles uh, for the bed. And uh, you need to make sure that you're making the pocket holes uh, on the longest side of the board. Because you remember, we beveled cut it and uh, yeah, so make sure that the pocket holes on the longer side of the board. The next step would be to assemble the bottom. So here is a small plan uh, how it's gonna look like so to give you some visuals of what I'm doing and so you could better understand the process. So what I did, I cut the width the length and the uh, two by fours and two by threes and I attached them using pocket holes. And uh, as you can see, I'm using my favorite right angled clamp. I'm gonna leave you the link below. I kind of feel that this is one of the most important tools that you could ever find for yourself. 
because it makes sure that you have a 90 degree perfect angle and um, yeah but don't forget to always check it with a speed square because you want your bed to be even right okay so i made the base but uh, i'm gonna put another plank in the middle later which i forgot at home so the next step would be to make the sides and for that you just simply take two by four and uh, um, attach the poles to it uh, so as you can see, so I have already longer poles on here, but uh, that's a, quite a story. I'm gonna tell you the story in a bit. What you can see, uh, what I'm doing, I'm making it, I'm making this bed a bit shorter. So that's what I did at first, and then I have had to redo it. So the plan is already showing you the taller version of this uh, floor house bed. And to attach it, I also use the uh, pocket holes, so it makes this job so much easier. So we made two sides, two poles, and we made the base, and now we're gonna assemble it. Okay, so the next step would be to attach the sides to the base. And for that, I use just uh, regular two and a half inch screws. And uh, what I also like to do is I like to pre-drill a hole, which is called the pilot hole, and then use the um, countersink bit to make sure that when the screw drives in, uh, the head is not visible on the outside. I mean, it is visible on the side, but it's kind of like not popping out, which makes it uh, so much more slick, you know? Yay, let's make the roof. So this step probably sounds like the most complicated one, but just uh, bear with me. It's not as complicated as the Sims. Okay, so now we're gonna be building a roof. And uh, as you can see, I have four boards here. Two of them, so basically for both sides. So two of them identical, these two. And this one is like, I think, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna look at the plan. I think it's uh, one inch longer. Either way, we're gonna take one from both and then we're gonna connect them on the top. Let me show you how. So you see this like beveled angle? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put it this beveled angle over here. So it's when it connects, it actually creates like a 90 degree angle. 45 plus 45. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And that's what's gonna determine where are we going to connect them? So yeah, we'll connect them all over here. Yay! Perfect. You see? Like this. Oh, and don't forget to add this middle plank to the base. And uh, I didn't forget to do it, but I just like left it for later. So it's up to you. But yeah, make sure that it's in the middle. But it doesn't really matter because it's going to be covered with the a layer of, um, of the MDF. Also, when you're making this bed, uh, make sure to use a wood glue. And as you can see here, when I'm making a roof, I want it to, it to be like super strong. So I added the glue, but I didn't add the glue on the sides uh, and on the base, because if you want to move this bed and you probably would want to move it at some point, you don't want to glue the parts together. Because if you glue them, then <laughs> it's basically going to be not removable from the room. And uh, you don't want that. So as you can see here, I made the roof and uh, yes, it's so much easier. So you just drive the uh, two and a half inch screws in like through uh, through the top of the roof. And uh, also, you know, like that's just like a little nice detail. So if you want um, this roof to be kind of seamless, so make sure that you put the longest pole on the front size. I didn't do that, but I think it still looks cool. But um, yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. Yay, one side is ready. To attach the roof to the poles, it's kind of a bit tricky. So if you have a helping hand, that would be perfect because um, yeah, another person would could hold one side while you're drilling in the other one, but um, it still works out if you're doing it by yourself. So what I did, I was just like attached like one side and then I went to another side and uh, yeah, so it worked out. So don't be frightened. I'm sure you can do that. To attach the roof, I also did the same thing with the screws, with the two and a half inch screws. I pre-drilled the hole, I did the pilot hole and 
and then I use the countersink bit and uh, to make this little place for the head of the screw and then I draw the screw from the top to, to top down and I try to make it at the 90 degree angle but um, to go like kind of straight down but you know what maybe it's better to do it at the angle but just make sure that you measure the screw before you actually latch it and it doesn't come out from the from the pole on the other side Oh my god, so this bed is already coming together and as you can see, I added 2x2 two two on the top to connect these two roofs and uh, I did it with a crack jack, but when you do that, make sure that the pocket holes are on the inside and uh, they're facing towards the wall because your bed probably gonna be standing by the wall, right? But it doesn't really matter, it's just like a little detail that um, you should uh, keep attention to. Then you need to attach the boards on the side so in this part you definitely need someone to help you because it gets like really really tricky to try to hold it and um, at the same time you're like trying to put the other side but you know what clamps are also your best friends in this scenario so you probably could use your right angle clamp yay so it's almost ready now i need to put the lining for the floor and uh, then i'll be done but i think i'm gonna do it tomorrow and also i need to Make sure that the screws, oops, I'm sorry. Make sure that the screws are not shown. But that's tomorrow. For now, I'm done. So yeah, as you could see before, you know, like the bed became like a bit taller and uh, it was not that complicated to change. You know, like I just had to cut like different size poles and disassemble the roof and just attach it again. So it was not too complicated. And then I started painting and uh, yes, I kind of feel that painting this bed really makes it pop out and like kind of hides a lot of imperfections if you have any. I mean, I'm sure if you make it, you're not gonna have any imperfections, but who am I kidding? I had a lot. Yay, so the first layer's in on <laughs> bed, but uh, check this out. So it's very, very uh, wobbly this way. So prevent this bed from being wobbly, we're gonna put this uh, board over here and then we're gonna put two angled uh, planks you know like at 45 degrees and uh, yeah they're gonna make this bed super super secure you see it's not gonna be as wobbly yay okay let's get started So by adding these like small brackets by at 45 degree angle, you really bring in this bed uh, structurally uh, more sound. And it's so funny because I see a lot of these beds on the market and I always wonder how do they look so stable, you know, like because it's structurally not very stable, you know. So I'm very happy that I added those brackets and I added this uh, board because yeah, it looks cool and uh, kids can put their toys on it or like their water bottle. So it kind of like has a purpose. And um, when I was making the brackets, I made sure that they are shorter than the mattress. So they're not visible from the outside. So that doesn't don't really make much of a difference, you know, like for, so it's still like a floor house bed. There's still no rails or anything, but it makes it very, very strong and very, very stable which is kind of important if you have kids and you're gonna leave them by themselves in the room, right? You don't want this bed to collapse on them. And uh, as much as you try to explain to the kids that this is a bed, that's not the baby gym, but um, yeah, they kind of think that this is a jungle and they try to climb it anyway. So I really wanted to make sure that this bed is as uh, sound and as stable as possible. This is such an improvement, but um, yeah, so I put the uh, brackets, you know, from both sides. Yes. Yay, so I put the second coat on. It looks so pretty and now I'm gonna just uh, finish it off with the laying uh, like under mattress lay, lay mat. 
lame, lame, lame. Basically, I'm gonna put the uh, MDF boards on the base and uh, stay put. So I had this MDF board from my previous bed, but instead of this MDF board, you could also use 1x4 slats that you would cut at 39 inches uh, to fit into this bed and uh, yeah, just like make it spread it out throughout the bed. I kind of feel that it's more expensive though and um, I don't see a real purpose to put like a real wood under the mattress because it's not going to be seen anyway, so MDF is the winner. To attach it, I used the bread nailers and uh, yeah, it was sound and safe in place. I love this bed so much and uh, yes, as I said before, you can find the plans for this build on my blog and um, also as well as the full-size Montessori floor house bed, which I'm probably going to make a video on it later, but it's pretty much the same concept. So yeah, just check out my blog and um, to see more details and uh, all the links for the sources and uh, materials and cut list and etc, uh, etc. Thank you so much for watching guys and uh, I hope that now you know how to make this Montessori floor house bed and if you have any questions always feel free to ask me and uh, yes, I'll see you next week, bye!